Acting on her intuition, Monica asks cheaters to check out his daily activities. Monica Munson, age 35, an events coordinator worried that her boyfriend is playing dangerous games with their relationship. Red is a uh, basketball coach, you know, in his spare time, and my son plays basketball. So I attend these games on a regular, and I used to see him quite often. So I decided that one day I was going to speak to him more on a personal level than just our casual high and by and basketball jargon. So I decided to talk to him, and we exchanged numbers, and it kind of went from there. My family was a little apprehensive about me dating him. Red is uh, a lot younger than I am, and they thought that it was more of a benefit for him or he was just in it for uh, financial reasons, but it's nothing like that. He's never even showed that side. We help each other, and my family was more against it than his family was, but now they accept it and see that we love each other, and he loves, Rhett loves me just as much as I love him. His cell phone was ringing, he was in the shower, and when he came out, he checked his messages, and all of a sudden, he was just angry because I asked, you know, about the call or if everything was okay from his reaction to the call. And he started a, a big argument, got dressed, and left. And I'm thinking that maybe it was just a reason for him to leave. He, he picks at any little thing. Anything is an argument. My livelihood is, is my life, and I did, you know, want to have a committed relationship with Rhett, but however, I don't have the time or energy to put into chasing him or looking after him. If, if he doesn't want to be in a relationship with me, that's fine, but he needs to say that, and I'm here now to find out if that's what's going on, it's going to be over, and if not, hopefully we can get back to the relationship that we had in the beginning. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Rhett Glasgow, age 25, a basketball coach allowing his fantasies to distract him away from his commitments. Investigation day four. After several days of investigation, Cheater's agents track the suspect to the residence of Monica's son, James. Cheater's surveillance teams quickly take up positions as the suspect enters the domicile. Lying in wait for about an hour, Cheater's operatives spot suspect Rhett Glasgow leaving the apartment. He hops into his car and travels to a nearby shopping center. After parking his vehicle, suspect Glasgow casually strolls across the lot towards a white truck where he meets an unknown female. She appears to be awaiting his arrival. Cheater's PIs become concerned as the two hug and kiss before advancing into a bridal store where suspect Glasgow and his companion browse through all the luxurious gowns. A while later, the two walk a short distance to a nearby Chinese restaurant and take advantage of its delectable all-you-can-eat buffet. Hunger satisfied, suspect Glasgow and his companion head back to his vehicle where they indulge in a different appetite. After several steamy minutes, suspect Glasgow's companion leaves the scene, ending the day's inquiry. Investigation day six. Cheater's detectives stay hot on suspect Glasgow's trail as he once again visits James' apartment. After surrounding the complex, Cheater's agents catch a glimpse of suspect Glasgow preparing to go out for the evening. The suspect travels several miles to another shopping mall. Cheater's PIs pack up surveillance equipment and shadow suspect Glasgow's movements. With a swing in his step, the two-timing fellow heads for the food court, where his sweetheart from the previous day affectionately welcomes him. The two can't seem to keep their eyes off one another as suspect Glasgow grabs a seat and engages his companion in some charming conversation. She is now positively identified as Shania Hibbs. Companion Hibbs and suspect Glasgow head off for some window shopping and a youthful turn on the carousel. It's then onto the jewelry store 
where the pair admire a few expensive diamond accessories. A short time later, suspect Glasgow and companion Hibbs leave the mall and return to the safety of James' apartment to get better acquainted with one another. Companion Hibbs accepts suspect Glasgow's invitation for a nightcap, and the two are not seen for the remainder of the evening. Investigation Day 7. Cheaters field operatives await further movement back at James' apartment, where suspect Glasgow again holds up. Early in the evening, on-site inspectors observe companion Hibbs making her way up to pay suspect Glasgow a visit. She disappears behind the door and all remains quiet for an hour or so. Cheaters' agents prepare to see what the night has in store as the pair emerges from the apartment. Suspect Glasgow seems to have forgotten his promises of love to Monica, as heard in this recorded phone conversation. Hello. Hey, what are you doing? Hey, I'm here. I'm about to go with the boys. Go see the game. Go see the game? Yep. Uh, what time are we going to be able to see you? I'm coming home. Yeah, not right now. So, when are we going to be able to see you? Well, I'm going to call you later on. We're not going to be there long, maybe two or three hours. Okay. So call when you finish, okay? Okay. No, I love you. All right. I'll let you go. Okay. All right. Peace out. Bye. Cheaters field agents compile all of the evidence before informing Monica of the unpleasant facts. After the break, the confrontation. With Rhett's promiscuity well documented, Cheaters notifies Monica of her case's regrettable outcome. Facing the senseless pain, Monica implores Cheaters to help find meaning in her dilemma. Monica, thanks for being here this evening. I know that the circumstances that bring you here have been very unpleasant for you, and, and it's, this has quite frankly been a challenge for you to go through, I understand. Yeah. Monica, we are here for a reason tonight. Our detectives do have some of the information you've asked us to gather. Are you prepared to take a look at that now? Yeah. Okay, Monica, on this day of the investigation, we observed Rhett leaving an apartment. Now, Monica, does that apartment look familiar to you at all? That's my son's apartment. He was followed to a shopping mall. He approaches a young lady who is waiting by a truck. They greet one another, and they go into a, a bridal store. After spending some time in this store, they proceed to a Chinese restaurant where they share something to eat. And as they return to his car, you can see an embrace, and I don't even, I'm sorry that you have to see that. On this day of the investigation, the same woman now goes to James's apartment, calls on Rhett. They leave in his car, where they were followed to a park, and just seem to be spending some quality time with one another, walking through the water park. As they're returning back to James' residence, this young lady does go inside. Where did Rhett tell you he was going to be this evening? He said he was working. He was working tonight. We do know where he is this evening, and he's in the company again of this young lady. I'm going to call the detective right now. Okay. We'll find out. You going to be all right? I'll be fine. Yeah, we just finished a client briefing. Uh-huh. Now she's doing well. We'll just load up and wait for your call. All right. Yeah, we'll be on standby. Okay. You ready to go? Ready. Come with me. This could be it. What do you have? They're moving towards the door. Okay, I see him. Light shirt. Okay, let's. we're gonna wait for him to get a little closer to the car. He's got a white shirt, and she's got a tan skirt. Yeah, no, we don't wanna spook him. Move, let's go. 
All right. Come up my side, come up my side. What is this? Uh, you recognize What Monica? is this? What's going on? This is what you mean, trust you? Believe you, you're a man? I am a man, but, you know that? No, obviously not. Yes, you do. You know what I'm saying? That's the reason why I've been trying to tell you for the No, moment. you haven't been trying to tell me. Flat out is all it needed to be. You could have came and talked to me. Well, I tried to talk to no, you. You didn't want to hear. You didn't want to hear. You didn't try to come and talk to me. You, didn't try, you could have came to my school and talked to me. I talked to you at home. School. What do you have well, going I on? I have a lot to do also. Are well, you too obviously... busy to be honest? I have been honest. No, you, you have been. With who? We've been, we've you have been to, honest been with her, and obviously years. you haven't been honest she with me. She even asked me to move in with her about a year ago. Okay, if you, if you were being honest with her, why would she still have you in her home? Coming up, the conclusion. If you were being honest with her, why would she still have you in her home? Because I think the minute, if you were honest, the minute you said to her, I don't want to be in this relationship with you, you think it you'd have a place over. to live? She knew that from the beginning. Over. What? She knew that from the beginning. She knew what? You, you moved know, in that, with me. She knew that I, I had a problem with, with our age difference. You know, just like her family have a problem with me. My family love her to death. No, but, my family, you know, my family doesn't run my life. I run my but life. They, but they control you, you know everything that. to go around. You put you know? my so son when, in this and everything. So that justifies. And then you're not even being truthful with this lady. So where does the truth come with her? Honesty. Fess up. Tell the truth. No. Be the man that you say you are. No, that's not why. No. <laughs> I love him. There we go. Love him, girl. If that's what you think, if that's what you think, you're just as dumb and naive as he is. That's all right. We're going to make it together. You can only do what you can. There's nothing you can do. Mm. And everyone's gotta Man, I got to walk their own way. I got to go. I got to go. She, she said she's ready to go. go. I said I'm ready she to said, go. No. And? She asked when can we leave. Both of y'all deserve each other. Good. We finna go. This is enough talking. Go on. It's enough talking. Go on. Sure is enough talking. More talking than you've done in two years. I don't think he was gonna ever admit to anything other than that nonsense. I don't know, everything is my fault. Now, all of a sudden, I'm a whole different person. I'm the same person that's, that he met. He's a different person. Don't feel like you have to prove that to us. What's it going to take for you to move on and get to the next stage in your life? It's the same hard work, strong will that I've had before him, before I let him disturb my life and now I won't look at it as a waste of time I'll take it as a learning experience and move on after the confrontation Monica reflects on the choices she's made coming up shortly cheaters discloses her solution for the future but next cheaters introduces Kate Swanson Kate tells the story behind what she considers a turning point in her understanding of relationships. Kate Swanson, age 27. Kate finds comfort by shedding the burdensome secrets she kept from her boyfriend, Damien. Of course I was upset. I mean, <laughs> who wouldn't be upset? I'd been being followed by someone who was supposed to care about me. I realized what I was doing wasn't right, but following me and having cameras show up and you know tell me what I was it was awful it was totally violating completely inappropriate I, I the whole experience made me feel sick what's up Kate, Kate? what's up what are you doing oh hey dude oh hey back off dude I want to talk to this girl dude 
There was so much rage that I did. I, I can't make sense of it. It's to me, it's still really blurry, and I've thought about it a lot. It's one of the scariest things that's ever happened to me. All I know is that I walked out of a bar and then it just seemed like bloodshed to me. That's all, all I could see was lights and fighting and two people I do care about or did care about just attacking each other and no one even really wanting to know what I had to say. Stop, calm down, calm down, calm down. Calm down. What's I'm up? sorry. What's going on with this guy? I'm sorry. I was going to tell you. I'm sorry. You're going to tell me when? When were you going to tell me? So who won? What'd you tell huh? us all? When were you going to tell me, honey? Um, huh? I call you. Yes. Hey. Guys, I, I told calm you down. About She's been dating him for three years. Hey, get easy, buddy. Hey. 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 Stop it. I know that this sounds silly because you caught me cheating. But I'm not a cheater. I'd never done that before. This isn't something I would classify as an ongoing problem in my life. Um, yeah, I lied. I did all these things. I would never do it again, ever, ever. And not because I'm afraid people are gonna fight or I'm gonna end up on TV. It's just that, I mean, obviously it's wrong. Obviously I should have just been honest from the beginning. Um, and I have to take that with me for the rest of my life. I have to know that what I, I did something wrong and try to become a better person and know that you can't toy with people's emotions and that they are important and, and that cheating is wrong. It's really wrong. Shania says that their relationship was on the right track but got derailed that night of the confrontation. After all, Ms. Hibbs comments, if Red is willing to... Seeking the truth behind her apprehension, Chloe turns to the investigative team at Cheaters. Chloe Swain, age 31. A biological researcher worried that her boyfriend is checking out what other women have to offer. Charles and I met back in um, September, and uh, it was about a year ago, and... I had actually known him for about 10 years before that, um, and I always liked him, and I was really happy when I found him again, and uh, we realized we had so much in common, and we were really happy, and we uh, moved in right away, which maybe was a mistake, I don't know, because we had a lot of problems. After a few months, it became pretty obvious that we moved in too quickly. We've tried to spend a little less time together because we jumped into this relationship so quickly. And so I, I thought that it would be good for him to spend more time with his son in Staten Island. And I'm finding that I'm questioning that he's always going to Staten Island. I have reason to believe that he's not always where he says he is. I think it's gotten to the point in the relationship where I'm not working anymore. I was really trying hard. I went to meetings with him. I went to help him in any way I could to get straight, to get clean, to get sober. I helped him with his kid. I helped him with his family. And he has done nothing. <laughs> if I found out that on top of everything I've been through with this man, with the drugs and the drinking and everything. If I find out that he's cheating on me, I can finally make myself put this to rest because I'm too forgiving and that's the only thing I cannot forgive. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Charles Nikolov, age 35, a copywriter being untrue to his longtime girlfriend. Investigation day two. 
Cheaters agents secure a square block radius around the suspect's residence and determine his daily routine. After being on alert all morning, Cheaters PIs observe suspect Charles Nikolov departing the home he shares with Chloe. Suspect Nikolov walks several blocks with Chloe's dogs in tow and with a very friendly embrace greets an unidentified woman. The two chat briefly and then advance to a nearby espresso bar. Waiting patiently outside with Chloe's dogs, suspect Nikolov's companion attempts to control the pups before he returns with a couple of frothy lattes. The twosome finish their drinks and head back to suspect Nikolov's apartment, where his female friend suspiciously hangs back while he drops Chloe's dogs off inside. Heading down the street arm in arm, suspect Nikolov leads his lady into a restaurant, where the two grab a booth by the window. Before even settling in, suspect Nikolov leans over to request a kiss from his willing companion. A while later, cheater sleuths track the couple to the companion's apartment, where suspect Nikolov pleads to enter her domicile. Proving to be quite the salesman, suspect Nikolov gains permission to come inside. Cheater's PIs are left out in the cold for several hours until suspect Nikolov leaves the building and heads home. Investigation Day 8. Cheater's field agents remain at the scene of the inquiry while accumulated evidence is reviewed back at headquarters. After days of inactivity, Cheater's operatives catch up with suspect Nikolov as he leaves his apartment. Just up the street, suspect Nikolov's companion, whose identity is withheld, eagerly awaits his arrival and lovingly throws her arms around the suspect after he crosses the busy intersection. The two walk a short distance to visit with a psychic reader. Gaining insights into their futures, suspect Nikolov and his companion take a short walk to a trendy coffee shop. They grab a cup of joe and settle themselves to discuss their lives together and to share a few kisses. A while later, cheaters agents follow the loving couple a short distance to a movie theater. Suspect Nikolov and his lady friend give cheaters PIs the slip once the movie lets out. They are not observed for the remainder of the evening. Investigation Day 11. Lacking sufficient evidence to conclude the case, Cheaters field operatives continue to stake out Suspect Nikolov's residence after Chloe has departed for work. Suspect Nikolov materializes a short time later, and guess who is once again anticipating his arrival? It's the very same woman previously observed with the suspect. She greets him with a great big hug, and the two are off to the subway for an undetermined location. After an affectionate train ride, Suspect Nikolov and his sweetheart tour some of the city's attractions. Suspect Nikolov conveniently forgets the truth in this recorded phone conversation with his girlfriend, Chloe. Hello? Hey, baby. What are you doing? Oh, we're here at a friend's house. We have to meet my sister soon, remember? Oh, God. Yeah, tonight's Tuesday. I'll make sure you're Hey, I was hoping you'd be home by now. I forgot, honey. I'm, I'm... What, what friend? Cheaters agents close the case and return to headquarters to brief Chloe on the unfortunate events. Coming up, the confrontation. Acquiring hard evidence of Charles' incriminating behavior, Cheaters requests a heart-to-heart -heart with Chloe to discuss the findings. Disheartened by the foreboding implications, Chloe pushes past her anxiety to put an end to the turmoil. Hi, thanks for meeting me so quickly. Let's get you in the van and I'll explain as, we, as we're traveling, okay? Because we kind of need to Chloe, thanks for meeting us on short notice. We do have the information that you asked us to gather. Are you ready to take a look at some of that right now? Yeah. On this day of the investigation, Chloe, the detectives observed Charles leaving the apartment. After walking for a little while, he goes to a, a park area. But after he's there for a short time, he's met by another young lady. I 
think I know that girl. She works at the club down the street. Um, really? Okay. Uh, They're followed to a cafe that's close by and have some coffee. After having something to drink, Charles takes the dogs back home. After a short time, he re-exits, and he and this young lady now go to another restaurant bar, and after spending some time together, they go back to her apartment. On this day, Chloe, the detectives follow Charles to the subway. He meets this young lady again. They travel to the, to the pier, and you can see as they are walking around, going from location to location, they're holding hands. It just looks like he's starting a new relationship. Oh my God. I'm so mad. As they leave, they're followed to a, I guess a, a salon where it looks like they both go in and, and get a massage. As they leave, they go back to her apartment. When he left this evening, he took the dogs and he met with this young lady. And that's why we had to have you come down as quickly as we did. Would you like to go find out from Charles what his intentions were? Let me call the detective right now. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, I gotta get him out of my house. Let me call the detective right now. Are you gonna be okay? I hope so. Okay. Yeah, we just finished up with the briefing. Tell me where you are. Are they still together? They're both together walking the dogs. Okay. Okay. We'll start heading down the street and just, we'll just look for you and just flag us down and point them out. Okay. All right, we're on our way now. Yeah, what do you have? Okay. Okay, let's start moving. They're about two blocks up on the right-hand side. There's a black umbrella. He's got a black leather jacket. And they got two dogs. Just keep going, keep going, looking. They're about a block up on the right-hand side with the umbrella. They've got two dogs over there, right there. Okay, here we go. Charles! Charles? 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 What do you think you're doing? What? What's going on? Charles, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Can you explain to Chloe what? what you're doing with this young lady? I saw everything. How did, what do you mean you saw everything? Well, we know that every you time you me. walk the dogs, you meet I, this young lady. Charles. I just ran into him. What, am I under arrest? Why would you have me you follow You are so lucky around? you're out. No, you're gonna I... cry for me to come back? Is this how you fix the relationship? Baby, come on. Huh? Baby, is this how you on. fix the relationship, you other girls? It's okay. It's all right. Nothing's gonna happen to you. Mommy's gonna be okay. You're never coming back. Ever, ever, ever. Do you understand? Do you understand? You're not gonna cry and you're not gonna call me anymore because you're never coming home again. Coming up, the conclusion. Because you're never coming home again. Do you understand this? Are you understanding this? You better go find a place to go. Where are you gonna go now, huh? Get, get does she have a nice apartment you could go to? I hope so. Because you're not seeing these dogs again and you're not coming home with I me again. Do you understand? I'm not the one that's crazy. Remember you thought I was crazy? I'm not the well, one that's you are, crazy. Obviously. No, I mean, I'm you're not. You're crazy right out here. No, I'm not What's going on right now? What's going, What's going on, on right now? now? Is that I finally right now. am justified that you are the one that has been telling me I'm crazy and making me crazy by he making me umbrella. seem paranoid. I'm not paranoid. Maybe you accusing you're Five Someone minutes. else. Maybe you accusing me every five minutes led me to it, you know? You are a moron. Do you understand? 
Do you understand yeah. that it's really over Look, now? And you I can have. You found someone who, who takes you to the movies and things that we never did. Have you been paying for him? Ever. Have you paid? We I know. Really think that's I'm sorry. That, I'm really business. sorry that you must have spent all your money on him because he doesn't have it's money ever. Do you understand? He you pays pays understand that, right? Oh, he pays for everything. Yeah. You pay for everything? Yeah. You pay for everything. <laughs> Don't call your brother either, because he's not going to help you. So you were forced to lie to her? No, I'm not saying I was forced, but I'm saying that that's probably one of the main reasons I cheated on her. That makes absolutely no sense. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's in pain. She's angry and she's frustrated because she's been trying to make this relationship work. Well, I, and I, the only I, thing, I was trying to make it work. No, I the, gave the, up way, on it the way you were making it work was by meeting another lady. Can I just go home now? Please, can we go home now? I don't want to do this anymore. I just want you out of here. All right. If you're serious about what you say, don't let this get away. Come on, girl. Come on, girl. Let's get out of here. Come on. It's okay. It's all right. Nothing's gonna happen to mom. Nothing's gonna happen to your mom. At least I know. It's. I know it now. I just didn't want to find out. It's my fault too. I didn't want to know. It's okay, girls. I'm sorry. After the confrontation, Chloe endures the after effects of a relationship gone awry. At the end of the show, Cheaters brings you up to date on her continuing improvement. But now Cheaters presents Burt Brooks. Burt recounts his life-altering experiences on Cheaters. Burt Brooks, age 28. Burt discusses how his former lover's infuriated display coincided with one of his most vulnerable moments. Yeah, we were having drinks at the bar. Uh, we went outside, and uh, all of a sudden these vans came up, and I thought, you know, this was something that John had set up for me for that, but I was, I was wrong. Uh, when Ethan got out of the van, it was chaos. <laughs> You want to be in show business? Hurt. Here's your chance. Hi, hi. What? Hey, Here's your hurt. chance. You want to be in show I'm business? Here's your cheaters. chance. How are you? I'm in. You that need has to step nothing off. to do with oh. this. Oh. Okay. Wait. Bert. Baby, are you okay? Hey, yeah, it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Can, you, can you tell, can you tell Ethan here. what you're doing? Why? Why would you do this? I didn't do what? John, he was worthless. He was a selfish guy. He approached Joey with a card for his own career. He was selfish, worthless. He didn't help me out in the situation. He had no, he didn't care about me at all. I don't know what I was thinking with the relationship with him. You all right? Yeah. I actually feel a lot better now. Come on, you're out of here. Bird, you're a whore! I've kind of left that lifestyle behind. Uh, it's was it was a roller coaster of emotions, you know, drugs, drinking, partying, all the time. <clears throat> it was it was just wasn't a good life, <clears throat> not a good life. Robert refuses to speak to him. Mr. Chavez says that love has no boundaries, even when it may cause someone else pain. He admits that one can't be sorry for falling in love and hopes that someday Robert will under... ...with another man. Michael brings in cheaters to settle his suspicions. Michael Laughlin, age 36. A cable technician worried that his long-term girlfriend attracts other eligible bachelors. The first time I met Cynthia was at her wedding. 
Uh, I was just dating a, a friend of mine, and I always thought that I could have somebody like her, and and uh, it turned out that I did, you know, and her and her husband separated, started going out, and she was just, uh, she was beautiful. The change Cynthia has gone through the past six months with her, uh, when she had her car accident, um, it was hard on her at first. Uh, you know, while they, uh, while they, you know, had to reconstruct her ribs, while they was doing that, she decided to go ahead and get breast implants. And I had no problem with that, you know, and uh, it's something she wanted to do. But our relationship ever since then has not been the same. You know, at first, you know, we had sex all the time. But here recently, you know, since her accident, we've only had sex a few times. Um, she She's always staying up late. I go to bed before she does because I have to get up and go to work. And she doesn't, she doesn't seem to help out. Uh, the truth that, that is the most important thing is the truth for me to find out, you know, because it's just driving me. I can't work, you know. I can't keep my mind focused on my job when I'm worried about what she's doing, you know, on the side. So I, I need to be focused on one thing right now, and uh, that's this job I have, because that's, that's my only, that's the, you know, the only thing that keeps things going. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Cynthia Murphy, age 38. An unemployed woman stepping on her boyfriend's heart by seeing another man. Investigation Day 3. Cheaters detectives continue to keep a close watch on the residence Michael Laughlin shares with his girlfriend. After lying low for several days, Cheaters P.I. spot an unidentified man walking to the front door. Without bothering to knock, the fellow enters the home. Cheaters agents watch as the unknown man exits sometime later with none other than suspect Cynthia Murphy. The two pile into her truck and depart the neighborhood. A few miles away, suspect Murphy and her companion stop at a local malt shop to grab a bite to eat. Any hope of innocence quickly evaporates. The gentleman demands some attention by manhandling suspect Murphy. Once inside, it's more of the same heavy petting and incessant fondling. A little while later, the lovesick couple makes it back to the truck and exits the location. Cheaters PIs carefully trail close behind to determine what's next on suspect Murphy's agenda. Next stop, a country and western honky-tonk bar. The two head right in and take a few shots before rushing to the dance floor. The alcohol appears to have an effect as the male companion struggles with his two-step. Moments later, suspect Murphy and her boyfriend sit down and proceed to go at it again. The impassioned couple seems to desire a more private setting. Cheaters PIs follow the two back to suspect Murphy's pad where the companion invites himself inside. Investigation Day 7. Assured of Suspect Murphy's continuing deceptions, Cheaters detectives remain close by her at all times. Cheaters agent's diligence pays off as Suspect Murphy's companion, now identified as Billy Hartley, shuffles toward her front door and once again lets himself inside without knocking. Following recent developments in the case, complainant Laughlin has installed hidden cameras throughout the house to assist in the investigation. Suspect Murphy and companion Hartley waste little time in getting down to business. Just minutes after making his entrance, companion Hartley has suspect Murphy on the kitchen counter, then in the living room, and eventually in Michael's very own bedroom. Cheaters PIs are shocked by the explicit revelation. Clearly, suspect Murphy has no difficulty entertaining herself all day while Michael works. Cheaters ends a long day of inquiry after companion Hartley departs the residence. Investigation Day 8. Regrettably, Cheaters investigators continue their surveillance of Suspect Murphy's residence to confirm all of the facts. On this sunny afternoon, Companion Hartley once again makes a social call. He pops inside, and the couple immediately begins another explicit sexual encounter. 
Suspect Murphy's contempt for complainant Laughlin is demonstrated in this recorded telephone conversation. Hello. Hi, Cynthia. Hi, sir. How are you? All right. How are you? No, I was thinking about you. How's your day going? Uh, it's all right. I'm ready to come home. Uh -huh. I'm ready for you to come home. Feeling all right? Yeah, I'm having a better day than yesterday. My back hurts a little bit. My head hurts. Not as bad as yesterday. What time do you think you'll be home? Uh, about 30, 30. Okay. All right, I'll talk to you then. Cheaters agents immediately prepare to inform Michael of suspect Murphy's debauchery. Coming up, the confrontation. Confirming Cynthia's culpability, Cheaters extends a helping hand to Michael in hopes of rescuing him from a harmful relationship. Shaken by the drama, Michael attempts to simmer down before viewing the surveillance footage. Michael, thanks for being here this afternoon. I know we had to pull you away from work and we appreciate your quick response. No problem. Since the first time that you contacted Cheaters, have there been any changes in your relationship with Cynthia? No changes. Pretty much the status quo. Everything same, yeah. the same. Are you ready to look at some of the information that our yeah. detectives have? Let me see what you got. On the first day of the investigation, there's a detective outside of your home. The detective that was outside of your home observed a man approaching. He goes, knocks on the door. Cynthia comes out with this gentleman. They get in her truck. They go to a restaurant that's not too far, and you can see by the body language, and there he pulls her hair, and they kiss as they go in. From that point, Michael, they leave the restaurant, go to another bar. You're still at work. They were observed on the dance floor, dancing quite closely, and after spending some time there, she comes on home, drops off this gentleman. At that time, Michael, we had you put the hidden cameras inside your home because we felt like, obviously, if she was there most of the time during the day, we may be able to capture some activity going on inside the house. On this particular day, the same gentleman arrives at your home. You can see by this, there's quite a bit of activity. And I know you can't see too clearly there, but there she is. Michael, right now, there's a detective that has been following this gentleman. We have reason to believe that he's going to go by your home again and visit Cynthia. I want to check with the detective right now and see what's going on. All right. Yeah, we just finished up the second interview. Have we had any movement with this guy? He just went to your house. OK. Did he just get there? He's been there for a bit? OK. All right, we're going to head over right now. All right, are you ready to go? Yeah, all right, come on. Yeah, we're rolling right now. Lay it out for me. OK, his truck's still outside? All right, I see you. All right, yeah, see you right now. OK, there's his truck. Go out this side. Don't slam the doors. Okay, you got your key. This way. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Let everyone get in place. Let's get in place. Keep it down. Keep it down, guys. Come here, open the door. Just unlock it. What the? Hang on. Hang on. Hold up. Yeah. Look at you. 
Can you explain? Man, man I'll just come by here just for a second. There's the car with them. Second and what? Stay in between, stay in between. I didn't mean that. You didn't mean to what? Huh? Yeah. Cynthia, can you tell us what's going on? Who is this dude? I just have to he's just a plumber. I just the, to he's just a plumber? Yes, he's just a Get plumber. Get out of my house. How often do you need plumbing? Coming up, the conclusion. He's just a plumber? Yes, he's just a plumber. Get out of my house. How often do you need plumbing? Not very Don't often. get out. We've noticed that he's come here quite frequently. Go ahead, dude. No, he you have not No, he hasn't. We know that he's been here Look on three you. different occasions. Well, he's here to After fix the six sink. years. You two. You hey. get it? Yeah. This is just... Too, Michael, ain't it? come on now. Get out of here. Ain't hey, nothing you can say. I can't. No, just listen. Okay. What? You can't clean it up. You well, Colleen, you're always up. at work. You never give me any attention ever since I had surgery. You never tell me I'm pretty. Nothing. You can't clean that up. Ain't hey, nothing you can say. All are the same. They all in the end. It ain't gonna work. Why? You can't clean it up. You Can't you give me a good chance? Well, this is vexing. It's been going on for a long time. No way. Treat me, treat this woman right. You would have a problem, dude. Get your keys. Get my your keys in my truck. What? Get your keys and get out. Yeah, man. Get your clothes. I need my. Wait a minute, buddy. Wait a minute. He's up. Hold him back. Mike. It ain't over yet, bro. Look, no, it's over. Is that true, Mike? All these videotapes. Ain't like your park. Watch it. It's not about being alert, Cynthia. I'll leave if I want to. Y'all doing? Showing on it. Where are you at, Mike? Bye, Mike. Here, get you. Take it with you. Where are you? Key to the truck. Maybe your boyfriend's got it. You say something stupid like that one more time. Mike, where's my key to my truck? Do you have a second set of I'm gonna keys? tear this place up. For her truck. Parts with upside down. Where upside down? Where? In it. Chair in the kitchen. Maybe oh, yeah. your boyfriend's got. Stop it. He drank all the beer up too, didn't he? Man. Uh, oh. Get out of my way. You got the key to my truck. Do you got it? I ain't got it. Why would I lie? You told me I loved you. I believe everything you told me. Mm. I told you, damn it. You, you're the one lying to me. I tried. Michael, I know this didn't go down the way you hoped, and I apologize that things happened the way they did. I know that that this is difficult for you, and, and I know you don't know how to process everything that you've seen. They both left. They're just walking Good. down the street. I don't go. know if either one of them could find their keys. Well, you know what? At least now you can move forward, use the last six years as a as education and information. You know, get what you can for it. I think at this point, it's best to put that behind you, and like you said, move forward. But again, I appreciate your time and attention. Thanks. And best wishes.
Following the confrontation, Michael struggles in anguish as he decides what to do about his tattered relationship. At the end of the show, Cheaters discloses his thoughts on the matter. But next, Cheaters presents Yasmin Franco. Yasmin first appeared on Cheaters as she discovered her lover's stark faithlessness. Yasmin Franco, age 38. Yasmin discusses how her vulnerable state coincided with the betrayal of her longtime lover. We get there and boom, just like a brick wall. I'm in shock. I can't believe she's actually there with him. I'm actually physically experiencing this, experiencing this. And it's the hardest thing, hardest thing I've ever been through in my life. Kenny, I'm Joey with Cheaters. Can you explain to Yasmin what? With her. Out of my face. Danny, what are you don't worry doing? about that. Why don't you just talk, you talk to her? Don't you mind your business. What are you doing? No, this is my business. This to me. So what do you? Me. Look at you. This is why. What are you doing? What is she doing? She's just trying to get the truth from you. Why don't you mind your you. business? This is my business. This camera's in my business. That? Why couldn't you be man enough just to tell her? Man enough? Why don't you get out of my face, man enough? I felt so like I just wasn't in control. I, it's actually better that I was in the wheelchair. A lot better because it might have been, it might have gotten uglier. Yes. Right here. Yes. Don't worry, you, sit tight. You stay here, baby. Sit. What the hell is wrong with you? You yeah. do this in way? Yeah. I'm not the one that's yeah. cheating on anybody. Yeah. I'm such a different person. I'm happier. Uh, what I got out of the last relationship made me a stronger person. And I know that this relationship I have now is because of me, because I'm happier. And I'm moving on. Suspect Murphy finally confesses to having cheated on Michael for an extended period of time. Billy Hartley says that he's completely in love with Ms. Murphy and comments that she's the best lover he's ever had. Despite all the drama, Mr. Hartley wants her hand in marriage, but was quickly shot down, explaining that Ms. Murphy informed him that she's just not interested. Be honest, needing reassurance both for her sake and that of her unborn child, Diane contacts cheaters for a thorough investigation. Diane Espinosa, age 20, an expectant mother who believes her boyfriend belies his promise of assuming the responsibility of fatherhood. I came to Cheaters, you know, to find out if he was seeing somebody else or, um, you know, what was going on. You know, I'm pregnant and I'm, you know, I'm going to have a baby. He said he accepted it one time when we were at a club, you know. He was telling me, you know, I accept you for the way you are. And I was like, what do you mean? And, you know, he, he put his hand on my stomach. And, you know, I just started crying because he said he was going to be a man and take care of me and this and that, you know. And, of course, you know, that yeah. would make me cry. He was looking at me straight in my eyes and telling me everything word by word. He wouldn't even blink. He told me that he would, he would be there for me. Since then, every now and then, like when we do go out, he'll say, you know, give me sugars or, which is give me kisses or, um, you know, uh, just little, he'll call me sugars or he'll call me baby or, you know, just little things like that that just make me feel, right. you know, wanted. When we talked about a week ago when things weren't going so good because I would always go out and spy on him and, yeah, I was a real bad spy. He'd catch me. Do you believe in your heart? that something is going on behind your back. I believe, sometimes I want to believe that he is, and then sometimes I want to believe that he's not. But I don't know, you know, because I'm that, I guess I'm just that type of person that I got to see it with my eyes if it is happening. You know, if he is cheating, why? I want to know why. What am I doing wrong? If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Identity of suspect withheld. 
age 20, a would-be parent whose conduct suggests his own need for parental supervision. Investigation day two. Although the suspect claims to be going out with friends and family, Cheater's surveillance cameras tell a different story. Catching the suspect on a double date with his ex-girlfriend, just as Diane suspected. Inside, on the dance floor, the suspect and his companion engage in some style of dirty dancing. Their body language speaks volumes, indicating that their rendezvous is more than just a friendly get-together. Investigation Day 7. On the final day of investigation, Cheater's surveillance encounters the suspect and his companion inside a local club, where once again, they touch each other in a manner consistent with romantic interest. Later, the companion rides passenger as the suspect drives her Mercedes-Benz to his home. Upon reaching their destination, she remains until 3.30 in the morning. Cheater's detectives determine that no further observation is necessary, bringing the Espinosa case to a predictable conclusion. After the break, the confrontation. With her worst fears fully realized, Cheaters contacts Diane to disclose the regrettable findings. Diane summons her inner strength while viewing the video evidence. All right, thanks for, for coming out. It's freezing, I know. I do have some uh, things for you to look at. The reason you called us was to procure the information that you needed. You were looking for the truth. Yeah. He has been lying to you. Now I want to show you some, uh, some footage that we were able to get. Now here they are. He does have three of his buddies with him. Well, here's his, here she is, here he is, his buddy and another girl. Uh, they were double dating. I have footage of them here dancing together. It doesn't look like friends. They're right here where the spotlight is. They will pause. That's basically what we figured is dirty dancing all night long, basically. He was the only one dancing with her. She was the only one he danced with. Um, here they are again walking together. This was on a, a, uh, a third night. Every time that he seemed to tell you that he was going out with his uncle or, or uh, oh, that's his friends. Him kissing her. Yes, that's him. Yeah. Again, that isn't what you do with a friend. No, that isn't. He has a shirt. Look at him. He even has a shirt I gave him. That's the shirt you gave him. That's the shirt I gave him. And he's wearing out with her. Look at his foot. Oh. Now, why do you think he's been telling you that he's not seeing anybody and not seeing her? I don't know. I really don't understand that part. I mean, if he's telling me that he's, you know, not seeing anybody, why, you know, why is he going to be so scared of telling me if he's with anybody? And then, oh, there he is driving her. Oh. So he's lying to you. Uh-huh. Let me tell you, the reason we're out here in this strange location is because we've been following him. Mm -hmm. And he's with her. Right now. And some of his friends. And they're right on the other side of this building mm -hmm. in a pool hall. And they're hanging out. Well. And would you like to talk to them? Yeah, I'd actually like to talk to both of them. Somebody See take this why place. the hell he's been lying to me. What do you think he'll do when we approach him? I really don't know. I could say he's probably going to take off with her. He's probably going to start cussing at me. I don't know. I really don't know. You and I are going to uh, just go up to him. We'll have the crew with us. And I want you just to ask him. You know, just say, I thought you told me you weren't seeing anyone. You weren't seeing her. OK, come on, let's go. OK, just be real careful. Don't run. <laughs> you OK?
yeah. your your child is most important. Okay, you're most important to us. Mm. So if this is affecting you, you just tell me. No, I just I just very I'm very upset. I know. I know. Very very. Are our detectives in the club still at this time? Here they come. Okay, let's go. Oops. Is this Ricky in the stripe blue? Ricky? 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 Is he in the front seat? Yeah, he's in the driver's seat. Passenger? Yeah, no, he's driver. a driver. Ricky, could I talk to you for a minute? Ricky, could I talk to you? Hey. Coming up, the conclusion. Could I talk to you? Hey. She gave you she gave you her heart, you promised her things. Would you like to talk to what you've been telling her? Ricky, would you like to explain? Yeah, that's not even, that's not a man, that's, that's a little boy. That is not a man. I'm sorry. He had to do it that way, he just wouldn't even talk. Okay, keep rolling, keep rolling, let's go back to the front. Come on, let's go back to the That was just, uh... You sign it, bring the man around. It's sad that he couldn't face his lies and stories that he told you. That is wrong. That is just... And then she couldn't even, she can. she had to take off like a little freaking chicken with her head cut off. Yeah. She didn't. Let me get you in over here. Sweet. Hold me. You following him? We're going. And then we're taking a left. Well, hell, and then we're taking a left. Thank you. Help. Let me ask you, uh, That's good. what do you want to do? Fall. F -A -L -L. Would you like to talk to him if he'll talk? F -A -L -L -L. No, where you see the lights. The car lights. Oh, car lights. Do not pull in, just drive slowly by. Because, right here, are we? no, we don't get onto his property. You want to give him a call in his house, see if he wants to come out and talk to you? Pull I'll try. Bandage. Just say we don't Jeffrey's we don't want to harass him. We just want to see if he'd like to talk to you. John, be very careful. Be very careful. Hello. I want there with, with there. Did he hang up? Yeah, he hung up. He hung up? Okay. Just looked out the window. Okay. He just looked out the window? Yeah. White Mercedes is down the at the, the light end of the just street. went out. Okay, there's the white Mercedes down at the end of the street right there. Yeah, I got it. You rolling surveillance on that white Mercedes? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm rolling surveillance on them. They're going to drive off as soon as we pull down the other road. Let's just see. Let's just wait you. it out and see what happens. Here they go. They're Yeah, I got him. I got him. They're coming right up. I'm, I'm filming. Do you filming them? Okay, they're pulling into the driveway. That's him running out right there, isn't it? Be very careful. Be careful follow if he him, drives Danny, by. Him. Be him, very Danny. careful, John. Tug behind the car, John. Get behind the car. Are you following him? 
Do you know where he's at? I don't know exactly where he's at. He's either going to be driving around the area, he's going to go back to her house, or he's going to go back to his house. Okay, what well, we're going to try to do is have you call his cell phone. Just leave him a message if he doesn't answer it. Hey, Rick, uh, this is Diana. Um, I just needed to talk to you if you could please call back. At, uh, and uh, if I just want to have one word with you if you don't want no cameras around or, you know, whatever. I just want to have one last word. What's, you know, what's going to happen? This is Tommy Grant. Um, Dallas, is this... He won't, he won't meet up and, and, uh... Well, that's, that's a shame. Hey, well, listen, I appreciate you... Uh, he gave me a fake name, I'm sure. He said Jose. It's his best friend. His best friends. Yeah. I'm sorry, kid. Following the confrontation, Diane carefully considers how her recent discoveries will change her life. Coming up, Cheaters reports on how Diane handles the months to come. But next, Cheaters welcomes Kimberly Woodward. Kimberly relives the anguish that she endured on the night her boyfriend's treachery was discovered. Kimberly Woodward, age 26. Kimberly remains disturbed by the relentless lies surrounding her relationship with her former boyfriend. When they showed me the footage and they actually took me to where they were. I just couldn't believe that for the past year and a half he had been lying to me. That somebody I love so much could betray me like that, it just completely blew my mind. Lewis? What the hell are you doing? Lewis, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. What the hell are you doing? Just... Get away! His girlfriend, we've been together for I a year and a half. Wait, 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 hold on. We're about, to, we were supposed Whoa, to be moving what? in together, oh, Lewis. Look, look. You are such a, ugh. This was more than just a mistake. This was an ongoing thing. And even after he got caught, he's continued to lie about it. So there's just, there's no forgiving that or moving on from there. There's just no trust. Okay, how long have you been seeing him? Two and a half, three months almost. Three months? Okay. Relax, Please relax. do not no, tell me that, that look, is no really his girlfriend. They've been dating for about a year and a half. Okay? Oh my God. I felt kind of sorry for Vanessa because when I first approached him, she was trying to defend him. So it just made me realize that he had been lying to her the same way that he had been lying to me. She knew nothing about me. I had known nothing about her. I don't have anything against her. I didn't want to fight her. I was just made me all the more angry with him. We have she's our video tape. Assistant. He's spending the night with her. She's your assistant. Dude, it is over. Do not ever try to talk to me again. It's all right. Whatever. You're pathetic. You both. You make me sick. Hey, are you all right? No, I'm not all right. Okay, <laughs> it's all right. Don't worry about this. Tommy, look, you love look. me. <laughs> Lewis has tried calling me. He's still telling his same lies, saying that she was just his assistant, that they were working. Even though the evidence is right there in front of his face, he still continues to to lie about it. So. I don't want to have anything to do with him anymore. Look, we'll take her. Do you need a ride home? No, I don't want to see your girlfriend. No, I don't want to see your girlfriend. Easy, easy. Walter. What? You are Look, such I don't want to talk to you. Ass. Just oh, go. No. I don't need to talk to you. Where's my purse? Where's my purse? Where's her purse? Who took a purse? Who took a purse? Oh, we've got it. We've got it. We have your Get the hell away from me. I wish I would have just trusted my instincts a little bit more and ended it when I thought there was something going on. I don't regret going to Cheaters because they gave me the proof. They let me see it. And I don't know that I would have gotten that on my own.
Diane Espinosa and the suspect are never able to settle their differences and no longer speak, not once since the night of the confrontation. She remains pregnant and unwed as of the final production date of this episode. The suspect refuses to speak with cheaters. Numerous phone calls to him remain unanswered. However, the suspect's aunt did contact cheaters and explains that the relationship is over for good. The aunt also added that she would be willing to speak with the crew. Be honest, needing reassurance both for her sake and that of her unborn child. Diane contacts cheaters for a thorough investigation. Diane Espinosa, age 20, an expectant mother who believes her boyfriend belies his promise of assuming the responsibility of fatherhood. I came to cheaters, you know, to find out if he was seeing somebody else or um, you know, what was going on, you know, I'm pregnant and I'm, you know, I'm going to have a baby. He said he accepted it one time when we were at a club, you know, he was telling me, you know, I accept you for the way you are. And I was like, what do you mean? And, you know, he, he put his hand on my stomach and, you know, I just started crying because he said he was going to be a man and take care of me and this and that, you know, and of course, you know, that yeah. would make me cry. He was looking at me straight in my eyes and telling me everything word by word. He wouldn't even blink. He told me that he would he would be there for me. Since then, every now and then, like when we do go out, he'll say, you know, give me sugars or which is give me kisses or um, you know, uh, just little. He'll call me sugars or he'll call me baby or you know just little things like that that just make me feel right. you know wanted when we talked about a week ago when things weren't going so good because i would always go out and spy on him and yeah i was a real bad spy he'd catch me do you believe in your heart that something is going on behind your back i believe sometimes i want to believe that he is and then sometimes i want to believe that he's not but I don't know, you know, because I'm that, I guess I'm just that type of person that I gotta see it with my eyes if it is happening. You know, if he is cheating, why? I wanna know why. What am I doing wrong? If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Identity of suspect withheld, age 20. A would-be parent whose conduct suggests his own need for parental supervision. Investigation day two. Although the suspect claims to be going out with friends and family, cheater surveillance cameras tell a different story. Catching the suspect on a double date with his ex-girlfriend just as Diane suspected. Inside on the dance floor, the suspect and his companion engage in some style of dirty dancing. Their body language speaks volumes, indicating that their rendezvous is more than just a friendly get together. Investigation day seven. On the final day of investigation, Cheater's surveillance encounters the suspect and his companion inside a local club, where once again, they touch each other in a manner consistent with romantic interest. Later, the companion rides passenger as the suspect drives her Mercedes Benz to his home. Upon reaching their destination, she remains until 3.30 in the morning. Cheater's detectives determine that no further observation is necessary, bringing the Espinosa case to a predictable conclusion. After the break, the confrontation. With her worst fears fully realized, Cheater's contacts Diane to disclose the regrettable findings. Diane summons her inner strength while viewing the video evidence. All right, thanks for, for coming out. It's freezing, I know. I do have some uh, 
things for you to look at. The reason you called us was to procure the information that you needed. You were looking for the truth. Yeah. He has been lying to you. Now I want to show you some, uh, some footage that we were able to get. Now here they are. He does have three of his buddies with him. Well, here's his, here she is, here he is, his buddy and another girl. Uh, they were double dating. I have footage of them here dancing together. It doesn't look like friends. They're right here where the spotlight is. They will pause. That's basically what we figured is dirty dancing all night long, basically. He was the only one dancing with her. She was the only one he danced with. Um, here they are again walking together. This was on a, a, uh, a third night. Every time that he seemed to tell you that he was going out with his uncle or, or uh, oh, his friend. Oh, that's him Yes, that's him. Okay. Again, that isn't what you do with a friend. No, that isn't. He has a shirt. Look at him, he even has a shirt I gave him. That's the shirt you gave him. That's the shirt I gave him. And he's wearing out with her. Look at his foot. Oh. Now, why do you think he's been telling you that he's not seeing anybody and not seeing her? I don't know. I really don't understand that part. I mean, if he's telling me that he's, you know, not seeing anybody, why, you know, why is he going to be so scared of telling me if he's with anybody? And then, oh, there he is driving her. Ugh. So he's lying to you. Uh -huh. Let me tell you, the reason we're out here in this strange location is because we've been following him. Mm -hmm. And he's with her. Right now. And some of his friends. And they're right on the other side of this building mm -hmm. in a pool hall. And they're hanging out. Well. And would you like to talk to him? Yeah, I'd actually like to talk to both of them. Somebody See take this why place. the hell he's been lying to me. What do you think he'll do when we approach him? I really don't know. I could say he's probably going to take off with her. He's probably going to start cussing at me. I don't know. I really don't know. You and I are going to uh, just go up to him. We'll have the crew with us. And I want you just to ask him. You know, just say, I thought you told me you weren't seeing anyone. You weren't seeing her. Okay, come on, let's go. Okay, just be real careful, don't run. <laughs> you okay? Yeah. Your, your child is most important, okay? You're most important to us. Mm -hmm. So if this is affecting you, you just tell me. No, I just, I just very, <laughs> very upset. I know, I know. Very, very. Are our detectives in the club still at this time? Here they come. Okay, let's go. Oops. Is this Ricky in the stripe blue? Ricky? 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 Is he in the front seat? Yeah, he's in the driver's seat. Passenger? Yeah, no, he's driver. a driver. Ricky, could I talk to you for a minute? Ricky, could I talk to you? Hey. Coming up, the conclusion. Could I talk to you? Hey. She gave you she gave you her heart. You promised her things. Would you like to talk to what you've been telling her? Ricky, would you like to explain?
Yeah. That's not even. That's not a man. That's that's a little boy. That is not a man. I'm sorry. He had to do it that way. He just wouldn't even talk. Okay, keep rolling. Keep rolling. Let's go back to the truck. Come on, let's go back to the truck. That was just. Uh, Two times he'd bring the man around. It's sad that he couldn't face his lies and stories that he told you. That is wrong. That is just. And then she couldn't even. She can. She had to take off like a little freaking chicken with her head cut off. Yeah. She didn't. Let me get you in over here. See. Hold me. Keep following him. We're going. And then we're taking a left. Well, hell, and then we're taking a left. Thank you. Help. Let me ask you, uh, That's good. what do you want to do? Fall. F -A -L -L. Would you like to talk to him if he'll talk? F -A -L -L -L. No, where you see the lights. Where the car lights. Oh, car lights. Do not pull in, just drive slowly by. Because, right here, we? no, we don't go onto his property. You want to give him a call in his house, see if he wants to come out and talk to you? I'll Hold try. Just say we don't we don't want to harass him. We just want to see if he'd like to talk to you. John, be very careful. Be very careful. Hello. I want there with there. Did he hang up? Yeah, he hung up. He hung up? Okay. Just looked out the window. He just looked out the window? White Mercedes is down at the end of the street. Went out. Okay, there's a white Mercedes down at the end of the street, right there. Yeah, I got it. You rolling surveillance on that white Mercedes? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm rolling surveillance on them. They're gonna drive off as soon as we pull down the other road. Let's just see. Down. Let's just wait it out and see what happens. Here they go. They're coming right up behind you. Yeah, I got him. I got him. They're coming right up. I'm, I'm filming. You filming them? Okay, they're pulling into the driveway. That's him running out right there, isn't it? Be very careful. Be careful follow if he him, drives Danny. by. Follow him. Follow Be him, very Danny. careful, John. Tug behind the car, John. Get behind the car. Are you following him? Do you know where he's at? I don't know exactly where he's at. He's either going to be driving around the area, he's going to go back to her house, or he's going to go back to his house. Okay, okay. what well, we're going to try to do is have you call his cell phone. Just leave him a message if he doesn't answer it. Hey, Rick, uh, this is Diana. Um, I just needed to talk to you. If you could please call back. At, uh, And uh, if I just want to have one word with you, if you don't want no cameras around or, you know, whatever, I just want to have one last word. What's, you know, what's going to happen? This is Tommy Grant. Um, Dallas, is this? He won't, he won't meet up and, and uh, well, that's, a, that's a shame. Hey, well, listen, I appreciate you Uh, he gave me a fake name, I'm sure. He said Jose. It's his best friend. His best friends. Yeah. I'm sorry, kid. Following the confrontation, Diane carefully considers how her recent discoveries will change her life. Coming up, Cheaters reports on how Diane handles the months to come. But next, Cheaters welcomes Kimberly Woodward. Kimberly relives the anguish that she endured on the night her boyfriend's treachery was discovered. Kimberly Woodward, age 26. Kimberly remains disturbed by the relentless lies surrounding her relationship with her former boyfriend. When they showed me the footage and 
they actually took me to where they were. I just couldn't believe that for the past year and a half he had been lying to me. That somebody I love so much could betray me like that, it just completely blew my mind. Lewis? What the hell are you doing? Lewis, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. What the hell are you doing? I'm just... Get away! His girlfriend, we've been together for I a year and a half. Wait, 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 hold on. We're about, to, we were supposed Whoa, to be moving what? in together, look, Lewis. Look, look. You are such a, ugh. This was more than just a mistake. This was an ongoing thing. And even after he got caught, he's continued to lie about it. So there's just, there's no forgiving that or moving on from there. There's just no trust. Okay, how long have you been seeing him? Two and a half, three months almost. Three months? Okay. Relax, Please relax. do not no, tell me that, that look, is no really his girlfriend. They've been dating for about a year and a half. Okay? Oh my God. I felt kind of sorry for Vanessa because when I first approached him, she was trying to defend him, so it just made me realize that he had been lying to her the same way that he had been lying to me. She knew nothing about me. I had known nothing about her. I don't have anything against her. I didn't want to fight her. I was just made me all the more angry with him. We have our videotape. He's spending the night with her. She's your assistant. Dude. It is over. Do not ever try to talk to me again. It's all right. Whatever. You're pathetic. You both. You make me sick. Hey, are you all right? No, I'm not all right. Okay, <laughs> it's all right. Don't worry about this. Tell me you love me. <laughs> Lewis has tried calling me. He's still telling his same lies, saying that she was just his assistant, that they were working. Even though the evidence is right there in front of his face, he still continues to to lie about it. So I don't want to have anything to do with him anymore. Look, we'll take our... Do you need a ride home? No, I want to go home. Hey, let me, let me talk to you. No, I don't want to see your girlfriend. Look, no, I easy, talk. easy. Walter. Look, I, I don't want to talk to you. Just, oh, go. Yeah. Just, I don't need to talk to you. Where's my purse? Where's my purse? Where's her purse? Who took her purse? Oh, we got it. We got it. Go. We have your purse. purse. I need to go. Get the hell away from me. I wish I would have just trusted my instincts a little bit more and ended it when I thought there was something going on. I don't regret going to cheaters because they gave me the proof they let me see it and I don't know that I would have gotten that on my own. Diane Espinosa and the suspect are never able to settle their differences and no longer speak, not once since the night of the confrontation. She remains pregnant and unwed as of the final production date of this episode. The suspect refuses to speak with cheaters. Numerous phone calls to him remain unanswered. However, the suspect's aunt... Malachi contacts cheaters to investigate the matter. Malachi Dancer, age 22, a copier service employee who imagines his girlfriend may be Xeroxing love letters to another paramour. Me and Amanda, we first met out. It's one of my favorite clubs. We go, I go there all the time. Um, went to there, went to an after party. We hung out with some of my friends. Everybody really liked her. And we've been kind of just hanging out ever since. You know, went out to dinner a couple times and we just stayed together. Me and, me and Amanda's been dating for about a year. We really enjoy everything. It's just, you know, I had to go to jail for a little bit, you know, because I violated my probation. And now I'm on ankle monitor. And I just, you know, have, we're having, having little problems. I can't leave the house, I can't go out. I have to, you know, all she can do is come over and I'm, I can cook her dinner and stuff and we watch movies. And I think she really misses the club scene and I think she's might be cheating on me going out to the clubs with other guys. What I'm hearing back from my friends is they're seeing her at after parties with different guys, you know, going out, having fun, leaving with them. And it's, you know, she just tells me she's out hanging out with her girlfriends and my friends and you know, it's, it just doesn't add up. To me, it's very important for me to find out if she's cheating on me because I really do love her and I love her, you know, with all my heart. And if she is, I mean, 
I just, you know, can't imagine what that's going to do to me, but, you know, I'm going to have to deal with it and go on because I just, you know, someone's going to break my heart up, you know, it's, and this is, you know, the first serious relationship that I've ever really wanted to get into and give a girl my heart. And then, then if she's going to break it, then I, I, I just don't think I can be with her. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Identity of suspect withheld. Age 19. A cosmetologist suspected of making another John blush. Investigation day two. Cheaters investigators tail the suspect down the dark streets and alleyways, nearly deserted at this hour. She pulls into an unknown residence just before 1 a.m. and quickly parks her car, seeming to know exactly where she's going. The suspect knocks on the back door and enters as if it were her own pad. Cheaters investigators hang tight on the case and shift into stakeout mode to see what kind of sinister turn this night may take. Cheaters PI sense the trouble looms on the horizon. The suspect is spotted exiting the house with a tall muscular chap with no shirt. The two promenade out of his domicile and detectives take note of her suspicious change of attire. The unknown male escorts his brazen broad back out to her black hot rod and leisurely strolls back indoors. Cheaters' crews smell blood as the suspect peels off down the avenue. Investigation Day 4. Cheaters sleuths again trail the suspect to her male companion's home, and the two waste no time in immediately heading off for another destination in his pickup truck. In the two days that have passed, detectives have learned that the male companion has a roommate and surmise that the couple may be going off to a more private location for some quality time together. Sure enough, they pull up to a local motel and proceed to spend several long hours inside. Although infidelity is now a foregone conclusion, PIs stay on the case for a bit longer. Investigation Day 5. Cheaters watch dogs pursue the suspect, who is again barreling down the road to the cheating side of town. She obviously wants to impress her new beau, as she's seen sporting a sexy and very skimpy miniskirt. The suspect heads in and disappears from sight. Once again, she fills Malachi full of some more hot air. After several enchanting hours together, the suspect is ushered out to her vehicle and Cheater's cameras get a close and upfront look at the muscular hombre. Investigation Day 7. Their habitual pattern is now firmly established. Shortly after the suspect's arrival at Combs' residence, the Cheater's cavalry sees her head out of the house where she evidently needs to retrieve something of importance from her sporty coupe. She then heads back inside and again vanishes from the camera's eye. Several hours pass before the two are spotted through a window in the companion's home. The lights are quickly shut off as the adoring lovers seem eager to answer the call of nature. After giving in to their instinctual necessities, the suspect and Mr. Combs mosey on out to the driveway and adoringly clinch on to each other. The cheater's team senses it's time to free Malachi from his nagging uncertainties and unveil the mountain of evidence. After the break, the confrontation. With Amanda's philandering ways well documented, Cheaters approaches Malachi to report the details of the case. Malachi must control his dangerous temper when confronted with the gathered surveillance. I appreciate the fact that you've trusted us. 
giving us this opportunity to try to get you the truth and the facts so you can be a little more comfortable in your life as you're going yeah, down it's, this path. It's, I just want to know the truth. I just, I just want to see it for myself and find out what's really going on. What I want to do is, is show you some video. Show you your girlfriend and what she's been doing. On this day of investigation, our detective followed your girlfriend over to this residence. It was late at night. There she is, making herself at home, goes right through the back door. When she went into the house, she went in in jeans and in a top. She comes back out in shorts, and he comes out, this guy without a shirt on. It's very frustrating, as, as you can see them. On this day, same deal. She comes up, there she is, in a little mini skirt, going into the residence. Obviously, it's real easy to see that. Yeah, she knows. Something went on, yeah. Two years. And I, she's hugging him there and kissing. That's, that's the saddest part that you have to witness. Huh? Um, to, to spend two years with someone. Do you know where they're at now? Yeah. They went to the motel. Let's, you want them? Yeah. Uh, let's, let's, you want to talk to her? Yeah. Let's, you want to talk to yeah, him? Yeah. Let's, let's go find him. All right. Well, I'm sorry that. Uh, hey that man, you're just, you're just doing your job. You know, just, you know, if she wouldn't have eaten, I wouldn't have called. None of this would have happened to begin with. Yeah. They're currently in a room. God knows how long they'll be in there. I'm not, I'm not waiting. All right, buddy. Come on, move right over here. Now, we're just gonna go right up and knock on the door. I mean, they're in there. Um, I don't know how else to have it, unless you wanna wait. No, let's knock on the door. They're in room 142. Come out, please. Hey, is Amanda here? You're the same again. Hey, dog, what are you? Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. Is my girlfriend in there? You, dog, what you? I'm Tommy Grant from the TV show Cheaters. Man? We've been following she you in guys there? together. Has she told you she's in a relationship? I, she said she's way past that. She's that she's not seeing that. anybody now? Not that I know of. The fact is, She's still sleeping with this guy. They've been dating for two years. Hey, it don't matter. Hey, me. Well, what? Hey, 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 no, no. Back off. You mean, if, she, if she wanted you, she'd be on you, man. Hey, Amanda. You wouldn't be here right now. You want to you come out and face this? It's right there, man. She don't want you to You keep it. For all I care. I'm the one cheating, huh? You do you what? With him. Why, are you, why are you just stringing him along? You know I haven't been cheating on you, you stupid. You were supposed to be going out bowling tonight with your girlfriends, but no, you're hanging out with him. There ain't nothing wrong with that. This is my room. Y'all don't even be in my business. Yeah, but why is she lying to him? And screw you don't mind that she's giving you the hot mouth and him the same the same jive? And what what is that about? Come on, man. man you don't care man, about man, that? Man, it ain't got nothing to do. I'm with her, man. This is this is me and her. I ain't got nothing to do with him. If, if, if they were together, man, then they'd be So the together. fact she's sleeping with him and you, you, you cool with that? What's I, up I, with that, Amanda? You're two-timing both these guys and you're okay with that? And you're cool with that? Yeah, man. We, we've been together. She didn't have nothing to do with him. That's wrong, well, there's man. No, there's nothing to do with him. So but you're you cool know what? You can keep the... You can keep the... I will. Cause she wants me, she don't want you. That's all there is. Yeah, do you like kissing her though? Yeah. And, yeah, do you and, like. You know what? You. You enjoy it? Coming up, the conclusion. 
Cause if she wants me, she don't want you. That's all there is to Yeah, do you like kissing her though? Yeah. Hey, yeah, do you hey. like... Hey. You dog? You. You enjoy it? Steve's hey, out. Yeah, yeah. Just, just Steve's out. Steve's out. Y'all don't even need to be here. This is my room, my room. This ain't nothing to do with y'all. I don't even know. I mean, y'all... Honey, just let me in, all right? No, but he has something to do with it. So you, it's just like that, Amanda. Two years, you're just going to throw it away. It means nothing. No, I don't. you can't come out here talk to me? No. Two years. You just can't face it, can you? Why don't you come out here talk to me? I mean, it's unbelievable. It doesn't even matter that uh, uh, you know, all the ways to tell you. At least you come up, face me. Yeah. Or at least have told you two you know, months she, ago, three months ago. Yeah, it's. She's just been honest with me. You know, I don't care who. You know, what? I mean, if you just be honest with me, you know, you can go about your own way. It's fine with me. I mean, I, yeah. I can get another girl. It's not hard. I'm sorry, man. I mean, I'll do whatever you want me to do. If you want us to hang out here, we'll hang out here until the morning. I'm not gonna waste no more time with her. It's just, I'm done. You this got the, it. you got the truth. I, I got the truth right here. She's, she's, I'm some schmuck in, in some sleazy mo motel. Hey, Amanda, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Hey, pal, you need to grow up too, but if you don't mind, Treating people like that, you're going to end up in the same spot. Anyway, we'll get you back if you want. Yeah, just give me where, just give me where I need to go. We'll do whatever you want to do. I, I don't want to be here anymore. All right. Go ahead and go off this one. After the confrontation, Malachi returns to serve his homebound sentence. At the conclusion of this presentation, Cheaters uncovers Malachi's predictions for the future. But now, Cheaters presents Nick Watkins. Nick appeared on Cheaters in the company of another woman when faced with his girlfriend, Crystal. Nick Watkins, age 25. Nick confides to Cheaters about his weakness when confronted with available women. To be totally honest, man, when y'all first walked in, it was shocking, for real, for real. See, what was, what was so messed up about it is, I saw those lights, you know, through the window of the, camp, of the, of the restaurant, but how was I supposed to know they was coming for me and what they, were, what they were doing? But I saw, seemed like it was a thousand people with cameras and lights hollering in your face, man. I didn't know what to do, man. I panicked. I couldn't, I didn't even see Crystal. It was a thousand different people so what she was she in my face yelling I ain't you know I, I didn't really even know what was going on hey, what y'all doing man what's up, what's up? Nick what are y'all doing man I'm Joey Brecker with Cheaters you know who I am you saw me at the hip-hop summit you don't want to talk my friend about him so what that mean? That ain't got no okay, you were the one that's supposed to have been hooking us up. I don't even know you. I don't even care what you have to say. I will put my head on your face. You better back up. No, I don't put my hand in your mouth. That's what you. What's up then? What you gonna do then? Hell, what you gonna do? I don't give a about you. I don't know you. You ugly. I mean, I honestly, to be totally honest with you, I do have feelings for Crystal. And you know, she's a beautiful human being, and this is not her fault. So I can't be angry at her, but I feel like you were a vehicle for her to find out something that ordinarily may not have been able to, to it, it wouldn't have went down like that. Hey, hey, you you move. Watch out, watch out, stop y'all, stop. I don't fight over no you What's up, man? man? That's what you like that, man. No, do not act like that. Some hope, man. All these big, man. Public. You's a mark too, man. Oh. Honestly and truthfully, 
I misled Crystal. That's what I feel like I'm guilty of. Not guilty of cheating, because in my mind, I just don't really feel like Crystal was as loyal as she could have been to me. Bewildered by the manner in which he was treated by his girlfriend, Malachi Dancer took some valuable time off to try to understand why women have a hard time being straight with him. He reported that he did everything in his power to do the right thing and tried very hard to be attentive to her every need. He concluded by saying that it is in a woman's instincts to get what she wants, even if it means lying to the people that are closest to her. The suspect was obviously very embarrassed about being caught sleeping with another man and initially refused to take any phone calls from Cheater's producers. Eventually, she did agree to speak briefly about her relationship and why she chose to be devious with complainant dancer. She stated that she grew weary of his inability to get out on the town like a regular couple due to Malachi's home confinement restrictions. The suspect also instructed Cheater's producers to relay a message to Malachi saying that she was sorry for not being upfront and honest with him. Malachi still refuses to speak to her and simply says that he will talk to her when hell freezes over. Jared Combs reported that he's relieved that security was on site during the confrontation. He relayed that he could have caused serious damage to Mr. Dancer, resulting in a probable assault charge and maybe a little time in the slammer. He is no longer involved with the suspect and said he enjoys the freedom of the... Tired of her constant pretexts, Brent looks to cheaters for a thorough review. Brent Frischman, age 19, a camera salesman who suspects his girlfriend, Crystal, may be making personal home videos with someone else. In the beginning of our relationship, like I said, we were really good friends and just kind of branched off into more in that we'd hang out a lot more alone together. And then about two years ago, it was, you know, the official boyfriend, girlfriend title. And, um, just the past two months, she's been avoiding me very, very bluntly, won't be returning my calls, won't spend her Friday night alone with me. And when I c confront her about it, there's always some excuse. Things that made me suspicious is just lately her avoidance of me and our relationship. And it used to be, I love you, you know, when we get off the phone and now it's just, I'll call you later and then never receive a call back. And the weekends, you know, I'm sitting around waiting for her to give me a call and I never receive one, so. I've been hearing rumors about um, her going out on a Friday night or a Saturday night with a bunch of friends and, you know, when I talk to her, she doesn't tell me she went out. She tells me she hangs out with her family and why would she lie to me if, you know, she wasn't doing something she shouldn't have been doing. It makes me feel almost like I'm being, you know, cheated because she wouldn't, why would she hold something back from us, you know what I mean? The fact that she could be with someone else right now bothers me really deeply, but I, I have to know before we end this relationship whether she's been truthful all this time. I've, you know, I've invested so much of my time, so much of my love that it would, you know, it just hurt my ego as it is just to know that she's been backstabbing me this whole time. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Crystal Kemp, age 18, an arts and crafts expert who may be sculpting an outside relationship with another man. Investigation day four. Cheater's detectives stay tight on suspect Kemp for several days, but are initially shortchanged in their attempts to catch her in a compromising position. On this evening, after several hours of observation, an unknown vehicle eventually rolls up in front of the home, rousing the suspicions of Cheater's PIs. Without hesitation, suspect Kemp saunters up to the car and hops in the passenger side with some degree of enthusiasm. At this point, it is unclear what may be going down, but investigators sense potential trouble and stay focused on their mission. The tour trail to a local elementary school, a rather odd destination at such a late hour. As they unload from the automobile, it becomes clear that her companion is indeed a man. The possibility of foul play becomes more probable as cheater sleuths observe the two walking toward the school park hand in hand. 
Once there, the suspect's male companion helps Kent to a pleasant joyride on the swing set. Although more evidence is required to confirm betrayal, it seems odd that Kemp feels the need to lie concerning her whereabouts in a phone call with Frischman. Hello? What's up, Crystal? Hey, how's work? Uh, pretty good. Our boss is actually going to let us on pretty early today. Is it cool if I come by? Sure. Just for a little while, though, because my mom and I have to go do some errands later. What kind of errands? Oh, we got to go to the store and, you know, pick up a, a cam uh, some film that we uh, took to get developed and stuff, so. Cool. I should be over in like 30 minutes. Okay, I'll talk to you later. All right, bye. bye. After several minutes of playful banter by the swing, the two then lazily head over to the male companion's parked vehicle, where the two exchange hugs and affection for a few minutes. Finally, with the hour approaching midnight, her companion graciously lets her into his car, and they pull away, stealing off into the night. Back at the suspect's home, Kemp and her male companion walk up to her residence like two teenagers coming home from a late night weekend date. Their body language suggests romantic intentions, which are unequivocally confirmed at Kemp's doorstep when the two make out passionately beneath the porch light. An expectant goodbye look from suspect Kemp suggests that this relationship may just be starting to blossom. Investigation Day 8 Several days pass before the suspect resumes her mischief-making, but when she does, detectives are ready and waiting. Once again, her male companion pulls up to her home in his vehicle. He has now been identified as Greg Scannell. The two enjoy a long, leisurely smooch out in the street, apparently not having any firm plans for the evening. To finish off the night, Kemp and Scannell engage in some intimate cuddling, which detectives clearly observe while making a drive-by. Cheaters watch dogs are unable to take any more, and owe it to Brent to bring an end to the deception. After the break, the confrontation. With Crystal's disconcerting actions captured on video, Cheaters locates Brent to reveal the truth. Brent steadies his nerves as he braces for the telling surveillance. Over the last few weeks, Detective Gomez gathered information that is going to be surprising, shocking, and is going to wake you up to the realities of what's going on with your girlfriend. On this day of investigation, an unknown vehicle pulls up. It's a little hard to see, but as you'll see her silhouette, and then as she gets in, you can tell that's her. Yeah. They went to this park. It's actually a, it was a elementary school. They're holding hands. Now they're on a swing. Here they are hugging outside of his car. You see, look familiar to you? No. Here he is walking her up to her house. Had a kiss goodnight. And he drives off. A few days later in the investigation, this guy comes over again. Here they are outside her house. He's, you know, got his arms around her. They're hugging, they're kissing. This, this isn't the activity of someone that cares about you. Yeah. About four or five days later, same cat pulls up. She comes out, her arms were full. She had some blankets. Obviously, it looks like they're going for a rendezvous. What a pen. Our detectives follow them to a park. Now this is, this footage gets a little more graphic. She's on top of them and it's just sickening. Enough. Yeah, sorry. Sorry. She can't do her frolicking around at home, but they go to other places. Since the last hour, they've been playing frisbee out in this park. Her and the same guy. Are you okay? No. But it's better to know now than find out later. Yeah. You want to talk to her? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. If he's over there too. Why don't we just go do it? It's right around here. Kind of nervous. I know. Let's get it done. Oh my god. 
Hi, Crystal. I'm Tommy from the TV show Cheaters. You ever see it? You ever hear of it? I'm Greg. Greg. Did you know that she's been in a relationship for the last two years with him? Actually, no, I didn't. Uh, so you've been lying to him as well? What, what is this, Crystal? I'm just hanging out at the park. Hanging out at the park. Have you been just hanging out at the park? Have you been dating her? Yeah, we, we were supposed to be going out. Yeah. yeah. Hope you like sloppy seconds, man. I tore her up. Coming up, the conclusion. That's not right. What I saw oh, was right. right. No, that ain't right. No, that ain't right. what's not right, not right is me having to show him footage of you making out, holding hands, having sex with this guy. Yeah, how long you been yeah. with him? I don't know, a couple months. A couple months. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Can we work this out? I don't need you. You can't talk to me all the time. Hey, hey, can you drive me home? <laughs> how else, I'd make how a walk. else am I going to get home? Can you drive me home? <laughs> you want to walk? So you were out with him? Were you? I want to hear it, yes or no? I was going out with him in the first place. I yes, and then you saw me, you said you fell for me. Did you fall for me in entirely to the point of where you would not be him? I can't say that. Okay. I figured he would have known, but that's, I don't know. Figured I would have known. Hey. Here you go. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with it. Does that mean we're over? Yeah. For now, uh, you can at least just drop me off. I'm gonna talk to him. Yeah. Pretty pissed off, yeah. I got to say to him, man. Sucks for him, too. My brother, it's like you got the short end of the stick as well. You were supposed to be getting married. No kidding. <laughs> wow. Is she Almost pregnant right or anything? Well, I think she, we thought she was for a while. She, oh, really? Yeah, just it was a whole, a whole other thing. But I just want to get the, uh, the cameras, actually. All right. Well, why don't you go talk to Brent over here and... Uh... Yeah, I'll yeah, go ahead and talk to him. Sorry, Brent. He just wanted to say hey. I know. All right. All I can say is I didn't know. I'm sorry. I, I hope you're not stupid enough to hook up with her. There's anything we can do here. Hello. I'm sorry. I just want to get out of here. Well, don't tell me. Tell me that she had gotten pregnant. She's pregnant? They thought. You know. That's, uh, that would have been a sad way to learn. Anyway, let's get you back. Hey, let's get these cameras out of my face. Yeah. Right, this way. Following the confrontation, Brent examines the telltale signs. At the end of the program, Cheater shares Brent's outlook on love and relationships. But first, Cheaters welcomes Julie Carlisle. Julie found herself confronted by her reconciled ex-husband while engaging in an affair. Julie Carlisle, age 42. 
Julie discusses how her experience on Cheaters has allowed a coming to terms with her selfishness. Whenever the cameras first came, I really thought, at first I thought it was the police because there was just lights everywhere. And then whenever I realized who it was, a part of me was really kind of grateful that y'all were there because I knew what was gonna happen from this. And then a part of me was sad because I, you know, I didn't really want to hurt Chris's feelings over all of this, but I mean, I knew it was over from a long time ago, so. What's going on here? Come on, Chris. Joe, director with Cheater. Get the cameras Julie, off me. You explain can't to Chris me. what you're doing in the park oh, with this gentleman. Camera, Julie. Julie, what's going on? Can you explain Come what's on. happening? No, no one's going to cause you any harm, I sir. Don't, I don't hey, Julie. What? what? What's going on? Whenever Chris came up and, and pushed him into the water, I was really, I was, I was regretful because, I mean, I didn't want Robert to get hurt over this because there wasn't really no feelings between Robert and I other than just out having a good time. And for him to take some kind of major pain over all of this just really wasn't what I was planning on happening. Hey, 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 hey. hey. What? What? What are you doing? What? Julie, can you, Julie. can you tell Chris what you've been doing with this gentleman while he's at work? He's wasting all my time, our time. Chris, huh? it's, we don't, we're not. Hey. Gentlemen, what's up? What's up? Easy. What's up? That's not necessary, right. gentlemen. All right, okay, go ahead. All right, that's it. Stop. Stop. Hey. Stop. Oh, Chris, just stop. Yeah. Just stop. I don't know if anything changed. I think I was just... You know, I'm, what do you say, I'm at my prime, you know, where I I wasn't ready to, to settle down and just quit quit living life to the fullest, you know. I mean, I just, Robert, show me a good time. We had, you know, we did things that, that I couldn't get Chris to do. You know, if I tried, he wouldn't do it. So, I mean, it was really just a lot of fun to, to go out and, and, you know, be around somebody that, that was actually willing to do things, like take JC to the park and stuff. I mean, you know. Chris spends the quality time with JC, but he doesn't, we don't do it together. So, I mean, you know, it was just nice to have somebody take me out and do all that. It's been over for a long time, Chris. I mean, it's been over. Were you gonna tell him before or after you moved in together? No, I, I don't know, I don't know. I was just, I don't know what I, was, what I was gonna tell him. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to hurt you. I'm not meaning to hurt you. Where's JC? She said, she said, She's at Lindsay's house. She's with Lindsay? You just leave her with anybody, don't you? Yeah, I think that this helped me realize that um, my wild oats that I needed to sow have been sown. <laughs> and I can just kind of settle down now and and grow up a bit and not do all, you know, not cause all of this chaos in someone else's life just out of my own selfishness, you know. So I really hope that I, I'll find another relationship and move on and be the wife that I know I can be to somebody and, and have my husband be the husband that, that I deserve. Apparently relieved to find out the truth about his girlfriend, Crystal, Brent Frischman reported that his intuitions have usually proven to be accurate. He said that he had no sympathy for Ms. Kemp and was happy that her manipulative ways would be televised for all to see. His only additional comment was that he actually felt sorry for Greg Scannell and advised him to steer clear of Ms. Kemp and her wicked ways. Crystal Kemp seemed unfazed concerning the deep pain she'd caused both of the young men. She replied that men had caused her great pain in the past and that it was time for a role reversal. She said that maybe she has a little growing up to do, but stated that the two men were quite devious in their own ways and were just as guilty as she. Greg Scannell was obviously stunned during the confrontation and was more upset than either of the other parties. He replied that Crystal hurt him so deeply that forgiveness may not be an option. Mr. Scannell felt extremely sympathetic for Brent and attempted to contact him several times. He also added that if Crystal is indeed pregnant with his child, he would try. Robin asks cheaters to clarify the matter.
Robin Smythe, age 41, a leasing agent worried that her boyfriend is surrendering to thoughts of infidelity. Now I've been together for a little over three years. We met when I hired him on as, as maintenance and uh, it just, we clicked right off the bat. I, he became my best friend and uh, we've been going strong ever since. How some of the things in our relationship have changed. Um, he's doing extra things at work that, you know, they're not adding up. They're not adding up to, you know, if I pick up a phone and call Mr. Johnson down the street and say, you know, was there last night and, and did he complete his work order and everything, Mr. Johnson might tell me, what? He wasn't here last night. Some of the main sources of tension in our relationship is that we don't get to spend enough time together. Um, there's things that go on with his family and things that go on with my family that, you know, sometimes we can't be together because we've got, you know, I have a very sick mother and I have to go stay with her sometime. And, uh, you know, and, and then there's times that he needs to go spend time with his family. So it's, we have a little bit of family conflict going in there. I have confronted him about the things that are going on and he just tells me that I'm paranoid and, and that uh, I'm imagining things and, and I need to just, you know, drop all my insecurities. Just the thought of cheating on me would, uh, it, it's gonna, it crushes my whole world. I mean, he's my life. He's, you know, the center of my universe. I love him deeply. He's, you know, it's all I've got. And, uh, I, I couldn't come into work and look at him every day. I couldn't, you know, I would have to quit my job and move out and just try to pick up the pieces and go on the best that I could. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Suspect's identity withheld, age 43. A maintenance man crossing the boundaries of work-related ethics. Investigation day three. After several lackluster days, Cheaters field agents close in on the position of the elusive suspect as he departs his workplace. The suspect arrives at a local grocery store and disappears inside. Cheaters PIs maintain their positions for several minutes until the suspect, whose identity is withheld, re-emerges with a bouquet of roses. The suspect enters his vehicle and Cheater's sleuths eagerly pursue him for several miles back to the apartment complex where he and Robin are employed. Cheater's PIs question the suspect's motive for returning to the complex after work hours. Cheater's investigators grow increasingly concerned as he changes his clothes, then heads to one of the units with the roses in hand. Knocking on the front door of the residence, the suspect is greeted by an unidentified woman. The two appear well acquainted, and after a warm reception, the suspect leads his lady friend to his vehicle. Several miles later, the suspect stops at a popular pancake house to treat his companion to breakfast. A good hour or so passes before Cheater's agents observe the two walking to the truck. Investigation Day 7. Cheaters field agents again position themselves outside the suspect's workplace. As the workday comes to a close, the suspect loads equipment into the back of his truck. He hops into the cab and Cheaters detectives prepare for mobile surveillance. But to the surprise of the PIs, the suspect does not leave the parking lot. The suspect instead parks his car in front of his companion's residence and then advances to her front door. Anticipating his arrival, the suspect's companion, now identified as Patricia Parvone, immediately answers the door. Remaining inside for a short while, the suspect eventually departs in his vehicle and then returns home. Investigation Day 9. Cheater's operatives pursue the suspect on his course to Companion Parvone's apartment. Dressed for a night out, the suspect struts to Companion Parvone's front door and is quickly joined by his date for the evening. The suspect escorts his lady love to his vehicle and gallantly helps her inside. The suspect appears to overlook his duty to be forthright with Robin, as recognized in this recorded phone call. Thank you. 
Cheater surveillance teams wrap up the investigation and prepare a report for Robin. Coming up, the confrontation. With conclusive evidence of infidelity, Cheaters discloses the regrettable findings to Robin. Struggling with her emotions, Robin prepares to deal with the man who betrayed her love. Robin, thanks for being here tonight. There was a time not long ago when you contacted Cheaters to find out if you could get some information for you. Your detectives have compiled some information that they thought it was important for you to see. Are you ready to take a look at that? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, Robin, as the investigation started, a detective picked up as he left work one evening. He was followed to a convenience store where he enters. As he left, he was carrying a bouquet of flowers. From that standpoint, traveled back to where he works and he changed clothes. From there, equipped with the bouquet of flowers, goes to one of the units, knocks on the door, and is greeted by a young lady. I can't believe it. They go back to his truck, walking arm in arm. They go to the restaurant. You could observe their body language as they go in. After having their fill, they come out of the restaurant. He brings her back home and as he drops her off. Oh my God. You see what? <laughs> he leans in. She gives him a kiss. I'm sorry. I know this is. I just can't look right now. It's all right. <laughs> You're going to be all right. Okay. Now on this day, we followed. But this time, he didn't leave from work. He didn't change in a nearby carport. He was all dressed and ready to go. He picks up his lady friend. They're again followed to a restaurant. After some time, here they come. You see again their body language, they're very close as they leave the restaurant. He ushers her back to the car. And now I don't know if this is a result of the libations that they may have consumed. He tries his hand at romance as he tries to carry her inside. I know this was disturbing for him, but would you rather have the truth about what was really going on in your relationship? I needed the truth. It's a lot better than living a lie that nothing was going on, isn't it? Yeah. At least now I know. What do you care to do at this point? I want to confront him. Okay. I want to... And you're certain of that? Yes. Okay. I'm going to call the detective. Okay. Yeah, it's Joey. We're just done with the second interview. Are they still there? All right, they're inside. Does it look like there's any movement? All right. All right, we're on our way right now. Okay. All right. You ready to go? Come on. Yeah, what do you got? His truck's still outside. Did, did he give you any indication about when he might be coming home? None. No, he, he didn't give her any indication when he might be coming home. Uh, is there anything we could do to get him to come out? Order a pizza. Hang on. You, we can order a pizza. Robin knows of a place that delivers. It's close by. Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, let's order a pizza. All right. Well, at least it'll get, it'll get them to the front door. Okay. Perfect. All right, listen. I'll, I'll call it in. 
All right. Pizza guy's there. Okay. All right. Do you see? I'm looking. I'm looking at the units. Right there. There's a pizza guy. Okay. Come on this side. Come here. No, get out of here. No, no, get out. Get out of here. I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Oh. Get out of here. Oh my I'm your girlfriend. God. No. No. What no. How could you do this to me? Hey, y'all get out of here. How could you do this to me? Get out of property. Get out. Right now. What the are you doing to me? How could you do this? How could you do this to me? After last night. After last night. And you tell me you love me. How could you do this to me? Oh my God. What are you? I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. And with who? And with what cheaters. is that? Is living with Robin. Coming up, the conclusion. I just can't believe that you're going to do this to me. What's going on? Call the cops. Go. This, was, is that, this is my man. This is my man. He has a commitment to her. They yeah, live together. Yeah, but they're together. not married. Yeah, but she, so it's open season for you. It, absolutely, it sure is. So you feel good about this? Uh, not really. I yeah. don't. Okay. Well, you're gonna have to know. make your mind up. You need to go ahead and get out. Mm. I can't. Not without killing you first. I can't believe you're doing it. That's not necessary. No, you that's need not to necessary. Go. Please go. Go, go. 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 What are you doing? Get out of my house. This other problem is not out. It's an accident. It was an accident? You know if things were better at home. Better at home? Yeah, you always go to bed early. You don't show me no attention anymore. Oh, please. Well, You're the one that turns it. over in the middle of the night. No, oh, think about it. Every time I try, you just shut me off. Okay, Where's but you could think of. Kevin, you? No. The, I need to call the place. I want them out of here. The best option that you could think of was just to start seeing somebody else. You couldn't talk to her about that. If you were unhappy, couldn't you do that? You don't, you don't even need to be talking to this guy. You just see it really? her purpose. It's not of his business, but it's mine. What? what? Oh, my business, this is my life. This is the last three years of my life. You have put me through this. Look what you put me through. I put you through what? I mean, we've, we're, we're here together every day. Well, I'm sorry, Robin. Maybe are you blind? We're, Obviously, we're together I'm blind, too much. but he's been over with me. Yeah. Things are over. And he Lord, loves okay? me. He loves me. Well, I'm going to tell you what, sweetheart. Uh-huh. You can have him because... In a few years, uh -huh. he'll do you the same way he did me. Oh, he'll no, move on no, to the no, next trick. This is just an accident. Come on, I want y'all out of here. Y'all got to go. Go. That's all I can see. Well, you're, it's not sure, like you haven't been warned. Go ahead and go and get out of my house. You know, seek help. Yeah. Seek professional seek help. help. For what? Not, 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 not. Hello? This wasn't cool. Why didn't you just ask me if you thought I was cheating? Because you'd have lied to me. You know, the only thing I can do is cut you loose. I'm. It's pretty damn obvious now. There ain't no kind of I wouldn't come back. After the confrontation, Robin looks forward to a new beginning, despite her boyfriend's continued attempts at reconciliation. Coming up shortly, Cheaters tells you how she fares. But now Cheaters introduces a man who was caught red-handed by Cheaters' cameras. The gentleman from the Kimberly Woodward case comes forward with his story. Identity withheld, age 27. Ready to put the past behind him, the cheater from the Woodward case comes clean in an attempt to regain his reputation. When I first started seeing the cameras come up, 
Uh, at first I thought it was something that had to do with the concert. And then when I saw Kimberly coming towards me, I mean, everything just hit to my head. I mean, it was just, I was there with the wrong person, the person I wasn't supposed to be there with. So everything just came crashing down. She thought I was there with someone else in a relationship, but I was actually just working and she just didn't understand that. Lewis, Lewis. What the hell are you doing? Lewis, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. What the hell are you doing? I'm just... Get away! His girlfriend, we've been together for I a year and a half. Wait, 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 hold on. We're about, to, we were supposed Whoa, to be moving what? in together, look, Lewis. Look, look. You are such a, ugh. She was very disappointed thinking that, again, that I was single, not really seeing anybody, and she had her hopes up in getting with me so we could hook up. And so when she found out that I did have a girlfriend for as long as I did, she didn't take it too lightly. She, uh, she overreacted, I say, at the time, but I guess in the heat of the moment, anybody would overreact. Oh, we got it, we got it. Go. Get, get the hell away from me. We'll get you home. Everybody's just playing games. Guys are just wanting to be players and girls just want to be on Girls Gone Wild nowadays. So it, uh, it's kind of hard to find love around, especially in a big city like this. Um, but you never know. You really never do. Suspect was unhappy. Fearing retaliation, Ms. Parvone is pursuing a restraining order against Robin and is eager to relocate with the shin. Sharonda teams up with cheaters to resolve her chaos. Sharonda Holloway, age 22. A deputy clerk worried that her husband's recent mood swings are symptomatic of a troubled relationship. Why you really want to go out and do stuff with me like not all the time he would want to go shopping, but uh, some of the times I would ask him he would want to go. Um, now he's just quick to send me on. He don't want to go. He's always tired. Um, he never have time. We don't do that kind of stuff anymore because he always out. Um, every off day he gets, he wants to spend it with his homeboys. He's um, treating me like I'm just a home girl. Or um, we're just dating, um, not like a wife. If the worst happens, um, I want a divorce because I'm just 22 and I married him because I love him and I thought he loved me too. Um, I feel that I have my whole life ahead of me. And if he's going to cheat, he's going to continue to cheat. Um, he don't need me to cheat. I mean, we can be divorced and he can go and do what he wants to do. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Patrick Holloway, age 31. A grocery stocker suspected of betraying the sanctity of marriage. Investigation Day 5. Cheaters investigators consider all possible scenarios before dispatching field operatives to the suspect's place of employment. Waiting patiently in the grocery store parking lot, agents on stakeout spot suspect Patrick Holloway emerging from the front door. Still wearing knee pads from night stocking duties, suspect Holloway accompanies an unknown woman to her vehicle. Courteously, suspect Holloway helps the lady unload a cart of groceries into her car. After completing the task, he then pulls out his cell phone and appears to program the young woman's telephone number into his cellular phone. The two chat for a brief time before suspect Holloway says goodnight and walks back to the front door. After re-entering the grocery store, suspect Holloway inconspicuously peers out the window to watch the mysterious woman drive off into the night. Investigation Day 7. Back on the case, Cheaters agents revisit Suspect Holloway's workplace in search of new evidence. Several hours pass before Suspect Holloway's companion, whose identity is withheld, 
emerges from her parked vehicle. She walks over to suspect Holloway's car and greets him with a big hug and a kiss. Ready with another surprise, the female companion opens her back door and gives her new boyfriend several balloons, perhaps in celebration of Valentine's Day. Visibly unimpressed with the gesture, suspect Holloway suggests that she put the balloons back in the car so he may attend to the business at hand. After a while, suspect Holloway returns to his car to retrieve several sheets of paper. Unsure of the contents, cheaters inspectors watch carefully as the couple converses while reviewing the unknown documents. A short time later, suspect Holloway and his love interest share a few kisses before deciding to call it a night. The female companion again presents the balloons to suspect Holloway before the two share one last goodbye smooch. On the way home to his wife, suspect Holloway removes the evidence from his vehicle. Investigation day 11. Using GPS tracking devices, Cheater's intelligence pinpoint suspect Holloway's exact location and dispatch mobile units to the scene. Once a visual is attained, Cheater's crews cautiously follow suspect Holloway into the parking lot of a local pharmacy. Assuming the location to be a predetermined meeting place, Cheater's agents spot suspect Holloway signaling to his companion. She immediately starts up her car and follows close behind her boyfriend. Suspect Holloway shows little regard for the truth in this recorded phone call with his wife, Sharonda. Hi, Brad. Hi. What's your name? I got a big truck. Hi. I got a big truck. Why you up? I'm not having to sleep. Why not? My neck burning for one, and then I'm thinking about if you made it to work on time or not. Yeah, I'm late. I need to go to sleep. I just stay up. Cheaters okay. uh. withdraws field agents and arranges a tell-all meeting with Sharonda. Coming up, the confrontation. With Patrick's secret activities now exposed, Cheaters meets with Sharonda and provides a detailed report on the facts. Employing her strength and courage, Sharonda prepares to contend with her emotions. Sharonda, thank you for being here tonight. I know from our conversation earlier that the last few weeks, even months, have been very trying for you. You're in a new marriage yes. with Patrick, and now it's approaching eight months, seven months, you've been married? Months. It'll be eight months, March 18th. We do have some of the information that you've asked us to gather. Now, I know you're aware that this has the potential to be upsetting. Are you ready to take a look at some of that now? Yes. Thank you. Sharonda, on this day of the investigation, we had detectives that observed Patrick while he was at work. He was seen at this particular point in time escorting a young lady out of the grocery store. He assists her with some of the items that she had purchased, loads them in her car, but there seems to be an exchange before she gets into her car to leave. Mm -hmm. And after that's been done, mm -hmm. he turns and enters. Now, what is his function at the grocery store. Do you know what he's doing? He's doing? a nice stocker. He's not supposed to be taking groceries out to the car. That's not his position. Okay. While on the outside it may seem like a simple thing, right. this service does not fall within his job description. Mm -hmm. On this day of the investigation, Sharonda, our detectives followed Patrick as he arrives at a pharmacy I don't really think that's the important part mm -hmm. what's more important is that he doesn't even really stop the car he does a drive-through right almost. and this young lady was waiting to meet him okay they followed one another to a park area that was close by and here we can observe some of their activities as they're spending some time at the park and before she leaves you can see another brief exchange right between okay. the two of them right okay 
Now I know that's... Mm -hmm. While it may not seem like much, mm -hmm. I, know that, I know that gives you all the information you really need. I need, that's enough. We know that this evening, Sharonda, he's in the company of this young lady again. Okay. We've gathered the information that you've asked us to gather so you can have some insight okay. into what's been taking what, place right. behind your okay. back. But we can also provide you with an opportunity to confront Patrick okay. in the presence of this young lady. Right. Would you like an opportunity to do that? Yes, yes, take me to him. Let me call the detective and see if we can get an idea of where he is right now. Yeah. All right. We'll just load up and be on standby. All right. Let me know if you have anything. Good. Okay. All right. They're following them right now. Okay. We have a detective that's following them. They have not stopped any place okay. just yet. We're going to go ahead and load up and be on standby. Okay. Are you ready to go? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Come with me. It's Greco. So he was picked up. We're moving towards you. Okay. Okay, they stopped. They're at a restaurant right now. Okay. We're rolling right now. Are they inside? Okay, they're on the left side of the restaurant, but they're sitting by a window, so we have to go in through the right side. Okay. We're looking for a, number, a shirt with a number eight on the back, and she's got a pink top on. Mm -hmm. Okay, everybody. All right, I see you. All right, everybody. Come on, Sharon. What you think you in here doing, man? I know you been chained with this bitch. What you think you doing? He married. You know he married. He been married with me for seven months and he got kids. He don't even take care of. Yeah, you wanted me to stay home tonight so you could be with her. You bought us something for Valentine. You couldn't even buy me nothing. What the is your problem? I want your whole family to know. Yeah, old church boy. You want to rap? You want to rap about church stuff? And then you want to come over here and admit, commit a judgment, man? I don't even know you. His baby was sick that week in the hospital. But he want to be out with you. I'm not even. Hurt. Yeah, yeah, you with me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was yeah, married. yeah, we married. We married. We stay right down here in the park at Wynwood. We stay right down here in the park at Wynwood. Yeah, we married. You been cheating with this? You been cheating? Yeah. 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 Coming up next, the conclusion. face like this, but they had to show me what he was doing, and they showed me. He's no good. We ain't, we ain't even been married a year, and he out here sleeping around, and I knew he was sleeping around. T-A-P-A-T-I-O. I'm on He ain't even worth the girl. Go find you somebody that's worth it, that got a job in the car. He don't have a car. He stay with his sister. He homeless. Oh, was he, he was driving my car. That's my Ford Escort. I work for the county. I pay for that. He was driving my car. That's how low down he is. I don't want to talk to you. Okay. Please don't get in my face. Well, do you, we just want to get your side of the story. I don't, I don't have nothing to talk to you about. Thank you. Okay, well, y'all just let her assault me. I would have talked to you if she wouldn't put her hands on me. Okay, well, she uh, did say, I, I, for that. I apologize for that. I got it. I see what you did for her. Took her to the park where you took me. Bitch, you low down. 
We ain't even been married a year. She busted my Worse than say, you finna lose your job because they, they gonna know about you clocking in and leaving to go be with these females. <laughs> Bitch, you ain't finna have nothing. You don't have nothing to say to me. Y'all gonna call that to come back to your restaurant? What's your camera? Cops will be here. It's over. I, I know what I need to know. It's over. I want him to stay away from me. He don't have nothing else to say to me. It's over. As calm as you were, I didn't expect that to come out It's of you. like a relief. I've been waiting to burst and get that all out of me. It's a relief, it is, sir, to just know that it's not my fault, it's his fault. He wants to be ignorant and he want to go out and he want to abuse what he had going, that's him. He got busted cold on national TV. And he have nothing to say to his mother, his cousins, his aunt, because he busted. He been lying to everybody for so long, saying he's not cheating, he's so in love with me. But if you love someone, you don't, hit someone you don't fuss with someone because you want to be with someone else that's not love after the confrontation sharonda reevaluates her floundering marriage stay tuned as cheaters reports on sharonda's next course of action but now cheaters welcomes christine moss returning after much spiritual growth Christine reflects on her cheater's experience. Christine Moss, age 37. Christine discusses how the confrontation with her boyfriend on cheaters was a positive influence on her love life. As we're walking through the doors, you know, it's like, okay, what's gonna happen? And what am I really gonna say to him when we go? And I look at him and it was just the shock on his face, the the frustration, the hurt, the anger that I had towards him. And, um, you know, we go and we ask him these questions and he's sitting there denying it. And it's like they have it on tape. Why in the world would he do that? Is it to protect himself or her? Um, it was just, I hated the whole thing. What? Move, move. When they asked him about us dating and he said that he hadn't, um, it, it surprised me, it was shocking because half the people in the club were there because they knew about the relationship. Uh, from the owners to the people running the place, it was like everyone knew, not only there, but at a lot of other clubs that we went to, how can you deny something like that? And I guess that was his way of just saying nothing. Can you explain to your girlfriend? That's not my girlfriend. That, what do you mean I'm not your girl? When am I not your girlfriend? This is not your girlfriend. No. When am I not your girlfriend? You will have to leave tomorrow. When am I not your girlfriend? How long has it been, huh? Um, I just want everyone watching to understand what I feel the meaning of this show is. If you don't want to see someone, stop seeing them. Don't play games with them. Again, like I said before, it, you're involving their family, their friends. You're not just hurting that one person. There's a lot of people involved in what goes on. And just have some respect for yourself and some character. Insisting that enough is enough, Sharonda Holloway says she's taking the bull by the horns in this and any other future relationship. With divorce proceedings underway, Sharonda confesses that breaking up is much easier when infidelity is involved. She now wants to refocus her attention on just being a happy, healthy individual. Acknowledging his displeasure with Sharonda, Patrick Holloway says he will happily sign divorce papers and cannot wait to get away from such a nagging loudmouth. 
Anticipating his upcoming freedom, Mr. Holloway says he's going to thoroughly enjoy the nights out with his buddies and rules out marriage as a possibility for the future. Mr. Holloway's companion is embarrassed 